This week we'll learn how to take a scalable vector graphic, or SVG, and create a matplotlib marker with it. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week I'm going to show you how to take an SVG file, or a scalable vector graphic, and turn that into a custom marker in matplotlib that we can then use to put on a map. And the example that I'm going to use today is a hurricane marker, because there's not an easy way to do that right now, and we can make a custom marker without too much code. So the first thing we're going to need to do, of course, is a bunch of imports. And if you don't already have this SVG path to MPL library installed, you can install it from pip. I can't find it on Condaforge, so pip is the easiest way to install it. But we're going to go ahead and import that as from SVG path to MPL, import parse path. I'm going to go ahead and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I'm going to go ahead and import numpy as mp. It's always handy to have when you're just learning about something to be able to create an array or to create a range. You don't always use it, and that's something that's worth going back and cleaning up. Then I'm going to import cartopy.crs, ccrs, cartopy.feature as cfeature. Now, some of these Cartopy terms are unfamiliar to you. I encourage you to go check out our Cartopy series. We have a lot of resources out there for that. All right, so all of our imports are done. And I actually want that to be the inline magic. There we go. So we're ready to create our custom marker. Now, there are two types of graphics, vector and raster. Raster graphics are pixels. You've got a grid, and at each grid point, we have a red, green, and blue value. This would be something like a JPEG or a PNG. A vector graphic, on the other hand, uses vectors. There are points or vertices, and we draw lines between them and then fill those areas. Vector graphics can be expanded to be very large or very small, and their appearance doesn't really change because it's just points and a vector between them. Unlike a raster graphic, where as you expand it, the pixels get larger and eventually it becomes pixelated or not so clear. All right, so I'm going to show you what a SVG looks like. I just went online and found a hurricane symbol on the Wikimedia Commons. And this is what that SVG looks like if you right click and open with a text editor instead of just opening it and viewing the image in a browser. So we can see there's some metadata here. It was created with Inkscape. But what we're interested in is the path. So this contains codes for the points and how we're going to connect them. And then, of course, there is some style information, but we're not going to use that. We're going to just create our own. Now you could certainly go in and parse this. I mean, after all, this is basically XML. Uh, so we've talked about how to parse XML before, but I'm just going to go ahead and grab the path and use it directly. So I'm gonna create a symbol called hurricane. I'm going to use that parse path function. I'm going to use triple bad quotes since this is a multi-line string and paste that in there. Now we're going to do a little bit of cleanup here. We got an extra quote. And we'll do a little bit of line wrapping. And this is just something that's nice. You could leave it all on one line, but why would you do that? It looks terrible. Uh, it makes your code hard to maintain. It's also not PEP compliant. And it takes just a few seconds. As you can see, I'm not doing anything that takes very long at all. Okay, so now we've got that parsed. Now in this case, we don't really need to do anything else special, but many SVGs might have an offset center. And when you try to plot the point, it's going to plot offset from where you want that scatter point plotted. 
So it's a good practice to just go ahead and make sure that it's zero meaned. So I'm going to get the vertices and I'm going to subtract from them the mean. And we're going to specify along the zero with axis. So again, all that does is make sure that your scatter point is indeed centered where you want it to be. All right, so now we're ready to make a map. So I'm going to go ahead and do the standard map making things that we would do. I'm going to define a map coordinate reference system. I am going to use Lambert conformal. Again, remember tab completion. It saves you typing and spelling mistakes, and it also makes you a faster programmer. We've gone over all of these parameters before in previous MetPy Mondays. I'm going to create a figure. We'll go ahead and make this a relatively large figure, 14 by 12. The projection is going to be our map CRS. I'm going to set the extent. And since this is a hurricane symbol, I'm going to set it to a Gulf of Mexico extent. And we, of course, have to specify what those coordinates are in. And those are in lat lawns or plat curry. We can add some features, such as C feature, land. I can specify a scale even. 1 to 50 million. And I go ahead and copy and paste here just because it's a lot of the same things, except I'm going to do ocean, lakes, coastline, and states. Now, of course, you could not put all these on, your map would certainly render faster, but I like the look of them. And I'm going to create some lats for my hurricane or hurricanes, depending on whether I'm plotting a track or just current. Uh, so my latitudes are going to be 20 and 22 degrees. My lawns are going to be minus 80 and minus 85 degrees. Now you might think you would call scatter, but to do this effectively, we need to use plot. So I'm going to call x.plot lawns, because remember x, y, lawns, lats, not lats, lawns. I specify that the marker is going to be hurricane. I can't forget my transform. These are in lat lawns, again, also known as plat curry. I'm going to specify a marker size, in this case of 40. I'm going to make my marker color be red. And you could connect them if you wanted, uh, like a track, but I'm going to go ahead and set the line style to none. Now you see we get a warning, but in the end, there are our two hurricane symbols on a map. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.